So switching in, we are starting with game number two between Vikingos Nomaras and Clan Colombia, and it is yes Baltic. And that's usually a map that is kind of funny spawning, and you can see that's exactly happening in here. First interesting point is the left part, which is quite obviously a natural choke point, very hard to get through, obviously, since it's going to be very, very easy for both of the sides in here. And oh, actually, they don't really need to do that because they are allies. As green is Dark Knight from the ends, whereas at the bottom is the gray player, Milenkolin, probably Milo. I'll be fully expecting that is also from Vikingos Nomaras, so that's yeah, not really going to be entering some kind of turtling game for either of the teams, but it could be a problem because of first the trade route that's a problem, of course, as it's going to be quite close to the water and really disrupted quite a lot. And otherwise, we see Grush and Sling from <laughs> Confer saying, Oh, well. Yeah, so that's going to be the strategy for the ends, and they are going to be slinging from whom into whom. Well, I'm not exactly sure yet, but what is definitely a pretty good advantage is that Dark Knight is on the flank as a Viking. That usually helps in the water battles as he is able to engage his opponents fully. And well, otherwise, let's have a look around a bit. His opponent is going to be CLB Gamin, who is Hans, so it's not going to be all that easy mirror for either of the, either of the teams, but at the same time, yeah, this is the post exactly as you're talking about in the spec delay. So we are going to be enjoying it just now. So we have a lot of time to look around the map and see what is the lay of the land. In the pocket for CLBs, we have Disco as Vikings. So that's the difference as the pocket for VN is Mongol, which is <laughs> quite a lot better, I would be having to say, because Mongols basically need all the time that they can get to properly boom and then unleash themselves in the Imperial Age and this definitely plays in that and I would be fully expecting that once the water is won for Viennes the Slink is going to engage from the Viking into the Mongol and yeah, good luck CLB is dealing with that. <laughs> it seems like that we are having choke points on the right side as well so this is, this is the choke point that I was initially talking about on the left that it's going to be important for both of these teams as really it's just a wall in here to prevent any, basically any kind of movement from the blue player into purple's base, same vice versa. And oh, this is pretty bad. This is actually very bad, very bad for the purple player, because right now he's basically having just the one stone mine at the back. And once he runs out of that, this is not going to be safe at all. If they manage to lose the water or <laughs> manage to lose the water, if the ants manage to win the water, they are going to be denying this stone without any kind of problem. And this could be really quite unfortunate for the players as Mongol most definitely needs a lot of stone for the castles, for the Mangudais. So yep, this is exactly a point that will be going for the ants in the long run. Otherwise, gold pretty, pretty nicely placed, so that's not a problem. And the pocket is of course not going to be, not going to be having any kind of problems at all as these are usually quite safely placed. You can see that this stone is basically a similar situation or kind of similar situation because it is having at least the left side open. So it's going to be gatherable from there, if not from the right side. Whereas this one is having the right side basically covered. So yeah, there's not going to be absolutely any way that Kushluk, or Kushluk will be able to gather from it if they happen to lose the water. Well, don't see really any kind of problems for the red player. Bor in here, which is kind of okay. A lot of fools between him and his opponent. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of fools. <laughs> Four doubles, actually. So, oh, an extra... St oh, God damn it! what is happening in here? This is some like some kind of vengeance of the nature, because this is going to be pretty impossible for them to wall. And I fully expect that once... Uh, some villagers come in, they will have to be pretty careful. I think Dark Knight is going to be discovering that because that, even with Lou, it will be pretty impossible for the villager to survive just alone. So, yeah, we'll be have, we'll have to be pretty careful. Both Dark Knight and his opponent come in with Dread going for the boar right about now. And otherwise, what you haven't, for example, looked at is the water. And is there some kind of problem with the fishies? I don't really see it. So, it doesn't really matter where the rocks are going to be placed because there's literally a lot of fish. But you could be saying that there's potentially a bit of an advantage for the pocket for Vien's Melancholin. Because the amount of fishies in here is really quite unusually high, I have to say. They all, almost don't, <laughs> they don't, don't really fit on the minimap. 
Which means that Melancholin should be going for a pretty heavy boom on the economy on the water, and this is going to help him quite nicely. And especially if he's going to be extra slung at a later stage in the game. Well, I could be expecting a pretty beastly Mongolian player for Wikim Gestomaras. So let's see. I'm fully expecting that VN Melancholin is going to be the player to basically steamroll the opponents and win the game for VNs. You already see the wall coming up at the bottom. With Palisade being placed atop the wolf so that he is actually scouting if a villager is coming nearby because that would aggro the wolf and yeah confer would be seeing exactly that the wolf is going somewhere else and well you can also see that he is right now messaging his allies that he is going to be facing the mongol and this seems like 18 15 yep this is going to be going for them yeah this villager is having loom so not any kind of problem He's going to be just fine against the Wolfie, but yeah, he's going to be losing this dude on the horsey, because yeah, he is halfway dead and he is also trapped on the wrong side of the wall, so he's going to be just trying to scout as much as he can, as a second boar is being lured for blue. Well, yeah, this is just going to be a question of time before he stops somewhere, and it's about time to check some kind of extra resources. Not really safe if they, or either of the teams if they happen to lose the water. But the rock placements are also in here. And we can see that Confro is going for a pretty aggressive build up. Not really afraid of anything at all, as just the scout dies right about now. A more defensive positioning of the dog. If he was basically the same adventurous as Confer, he would be placing it maybe on this peninsula, but that could st still come a bit later. But since he has placed his dog in a pretty good position, basically right next to bit of shorefish and some deep fish. You can see marlins right about here next to the rock. This is going to make his economy quite fast on the water and really this could fasten up his advance quite nicely and considerably even above his opponents in the pocket and or rather allies in the pocket and opponents as well. Pretty good, pretty good position as we have talked about a bit earlier. Not any problem with the fishies. Normal positioning of the dock and this is yeah this is a much more aggressive positioning from the red player than from the purple and since green is doing basically the same it's going to be all up about who advances faster and we can see that VNs are going to be slightly seconds faster than their opponents Confer and Dark Knight already coming in with Kushluk just being the only one at the bottom whereas the other players are still not going up and two release for Melancholin who is going to be going to be fast castling, we're going to be see, seeing that because that would be rather fast castle would be signaled by a higher amount of villagers like at least 27 or 29 27 usually, 29 is kind of slightly greedy already and you can see that he is coming up so yep I fully expect that Melancholin is going fast castle going for extra release right about now so yep that is exactly what is going to happen after this last villager is done so it's going to be 26 and I fully expect that it's going to be just one extra victim. And looking at a pretty big amount of fishies, as I was talking about a bit earlier, he should be really taking advantage of that and booming really, really incredibly hard. So at the top, not really much happening in here, besides just the scouts trying to scout what their opponents are doing. As dudes are advancing into Feudal Age with second and third dog being built for the Viking at the top for Dark Knight. Whereas his opponent is having three already ready as a hunts, but since the cheaper galleys are going to be advantage for the Viking, pretty big one, he should be having the advantage above his opponent quite strongly, especially with the faster advance into the next age. So feudal age with just 26 from Melancholin, so he thought that it's going to be quite okay to forego the last Willy. Whereas nothing interesting in here, probably not. Third dog being built. At the top and it's going to be switched somewhere else and that's interesting so where is he going to the bottom let's switch into kush look oh yeah he's going a bit more to the bottom which i think is slightly better option uh, if he wants to fight against the blue opponent because he has at least scouted a bit through the red scout in there and yep with the three dogs from the hunts in here it's going to be a pretty nice fight Let's see who is going to be better. So far it seems like it's reasonably equal with slight advantage for Confer. With proper micro, yeah he's dealing pretty good damage extra 
into, the, into his opponents, Galais, and well, if properly isn't careful enough, right now he's going to get extra two. He might be in a pretty tough situation because the three dogs were up quite a lot faster for Confer, and that definitely will be a pretty big advantage for him and should be carrying over into the next fights if he's careful enough with the bullets that he seems to be exactly right about now. At the top, you can see the Viking exactly winning as you'd be expecting, with even a fourth dog being dropped for him. Just still three for the red player, and building houses around the shoreline so that he sees what his opponent is going to be doing along the shore, maybe some trickle landing and some such. Yeah, exactly the palisades again from the red player right about now, so that he sees if the opponent villager is going for absolutely anything, like maybe doing a wall, or maybe even some militias for a rush. That sometimes happens on even maps like this. But Green has to be careful because right now he's being doubled as Disco is joining with Gamin, but so far it doesn't seem like that he needs to worry all that much as the advantage of the cheaper galleys is really paying off for Dark Knight as a Viking. But, 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 really, it's still a double. It's still a double, and with the amount of boats right now getting higher for Gamin, he really needs to wait for the castle agent Milan Colin before he engages into his opponents somehow fully. Blacksmith for the Viking, so he's probably hoping for fast castle as well. Or fast castle, faster castle. But look at how he doesn't have the resources. That means that he is just going for upgrades into the boats, and they make a whole lot of difference, especially in especially in the uh, armor. But usually Fletching is going to be the first, as exactly as Gamin is going for it right about now. That's going to be a pretty tough fight for Green to take if he hasn't noticed the Fletching. Fletching coming up from for this and Dark Knight as well. And really, this is just signaling that probably Green should be even running away from this position and basically just waiting for Melancholin to go into the Castle Age and join with the War Guys because without any kind of help, this Viking is going to be having his hands full with the double that he's right now subjected to, even though he's doing a pretty good job just by himself. Yeah, with some proper micro, he's able to handle his opponents quite well. So let's check somewhere else, for example, for the blue player, who is not really all that much engaging into the purple, besides the early fights that we have seen, and purple doesn't really have all that many boats, just five of them, against quite a lot more from his opponent, but with the engagement, yeah, that's going to be a bit of a fight right about now. But since, oh, well, <laughs> purple is <laughs> quite strongly mismanaging his boats just about now, and it's allowing some extra free shots for blue, and that is really pretty bad news for Kushlu, as right about now he is forced to retreat, and that is exactly what his opponent, Confer, is right now needing for the extra advantage. You also need to notice that Teal is going into the middle, disrupting the economy from Melancholy, which is something that he most definitely doesn't want. And it almost seems like that it's going to be developing into a triple at the top, into a triple versus a double, as Blue is of course going to be following, as he cannot really afford not to follow and let this, upon, let this ally green be doubled. And we can see that green is actually doing a pretty good job just by himself, and it might be also because Disco decided to go somewhere else for a bit of raiding into the pocket, and well, with the fire ships coming up, well, 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 it's going to be a pretty tough job for <laughs> CLBs right now to handle their opponents. Horse color for a better farming for Melancholin, so yeah, he's by definitely booming quite a lot. So far at 35 willies, but he should be coming for extra for extra TCs and going for heavy blow. so yep, he is most definitely going for a lot of economy for himself. The pocket for the opposing team is doing the same. As a Viking. That's a bit of a switch in here. One TC, second, third, fourth. <laughs> so that's a pretty greedy boom for the Mongo, but I really think that he can afford it in the middle of the map with pretty good resources and such. So I would be fully expecting that he will be slingshotting himself into pretty, into, sorry, pretty interesting beast mode. And well, CLBs do have to be careful so that they are not left behind. So they are not left behind in the game in a situation that they wouldn't be able to overcome. So you can see that the double has switched from the top to the bottom, with right now blue 
having a bit of fun, <laughs> having to defend exactly as green. But green seems to be handling the situation quite nicely, and I would be slightly expecting that he might be even attempting to help at the bottom quite soon, because he doesn't really need all that many galleys at the top, as he is winning quite convincingly. And going for cartography is quite important, because he will see what his allies are seeing, and it will allow him to react slightly better to potentially Dublin at the bottom and other developments around the map. Here you can see that the Viking in Vikingos Nomaras is doing a pretty good job. Yeah, of course, they are Vikingos Nomaras, <laughs> so that's definitely presupposed. And not much really happening in here, just Green trying to patrol in here, trying to see once his opponent is going to be switching into something a bit more interesting. Wheelbarrow and going for a market. Interesting choice. And at the bottom, not much happening as Confer is just biding his time as he's clicking into Castle Age and hoping for a bit more war galleys for himself. So yet another market in here right now for Kushluk as he's jumping into the Castle Age as well. The same as Confer. And let's check the boom in here. Already 64 release for Melancholin, so that's by far <laughs> the most in here. Already by like a half of what the other players are having. Okay, you can see this is just going to be pretty huge. Those greedy 40 CS for him. Bit of idols here and there, but not anything substantial that should be disrupting the, the women. And finally, some war galleys are joining it through fun. As Green is joining, or rather, basically owning in the battle in here, but with even with the numbers, he really needs to be careful as the extra attack and extra hit points for the galleys, extra 15 hit points and extra one attack is quite a lot of difference. And without substantial advantage in numbers for the green player, he wouldn't be in a good situation to deal with this pretty decent armada from his opponent. Yeah, a bit of a defense from blue, basically trying to protect his ally in the middle, so that he can fish boom a bit, even though he doesn't seem to be all that interested in that. Which is kind of a shame, I think, because it, it could help him quite a lot. But Castle is just coming in, ballistics from Disco as well, so yep. It's looking like that war galleys are going to be the units of choice in just a moment, and this is this is very important because unfortunately Dark Knight has forced himself into a pretty terrible situation, into basically a trap, and he's going to lose absolutely everything. And this is very very crucial right now for CLBs because before he advances into the Castle Age, he's going to lose all the army and not having any kind of advantage from the war galleys that he's going to be having, and you can see. That even bl though Blue is right now arriving at the battle scene, he's arriving quite late, exactly at the moment where all the army from Dark Knight is dead. And oh my, this is this is bad. This was a pretty bad mistake for Dark Knight. And let's see if he can come back from this. I expect that he can. Once the War Galleys are in with the Botkin Arrow for the Blue player, the battle is going to be basically equal, even with the small reinforcements from the Deal player from the bottom. And he should be really getting rid of the deal right now. But it's still going to allow at least a bit of time for Gamin to go back into the game and really be a presence of the water yet again. Not much really happening at the top, just a dog being built by Gamin, really intent on going back with advancing into rather researching into war galleys and Potkinero as well for extra attack. And well, really, Blue has to take this carefully as he probably needs some reinforcements in his home docks. Let's switch into Confer, how many boats he is he having? Well, at least something for a bit of raid on his opponent. But really, the water battle is still quite open, and with the potential reinforcements from the deal player in here, this is still going to take quite some quite some effort for VNs to somehow win the water or even CLBs, because so far it really seems like that is reasonably equal, maybe slightly going for CLBs. But at the same time, we see Imperial Age for Melancholin, with already 102 villagers <laughs> with Disco, the pocket for other team having just 60. So that's pretty big. Pretty big. So far, no sling. Haven't seen really any kind of... a kind of idea, or other signals that it could be happening. And we already see Castle being dropped. East one defensive one for the stone, which is very important. Protecting from the water battles in here. And already arriving at this allies base with the villagers for extra castles. And yeah, they could just as well, just as very well, be kind of offensive. 
a town center for the blue player and I'm expecting that the castles are going to be dropped really somewhere in here near the wolfies as he really, really doesn't need to build them inside the base at all. Units of choice for the Han Confer seem to be cavalry archers for the moment. But looking how he cannot really push through at all with the stonewall, stonewall already being built by Kushluk. Well, not exactly sure if it's really going to be all that much effective for him, but he's probably hoping, or rather thinking, that it's a good unit of choice since he is spending, or rather having his economy focused on boats, which means wood and gold, and cavalry archers cost the same, so it kind of makes sense to build the same kind of unit that your economy is optimized for. Stone gold shaft mining for melancholin, so still extra economical advantage for him, with coinage for dark knight. And yeah, this is exactly what we were talking about a bit earlier, as that is, sling, is going to be signaling a sling from the Viking, because he is probably not going to be engaging on the water all that much. It almost seems like the Vians are actually giving up on it. Yeah, it's pretty sure certain right about now, and the only one playing on the water left for the ends is going to be Confer, but they are hoping that their ally in the middle, Melancholin, is boomed enough. 117 against just 74 from Disco, and I have to agree on that. So that's going to be a pretty big storm from him, and let's see how successful is he going to be. Yeah, exactly as expected. Castles in a pretty aggressive position with Dark Siege Workshop as well. Oh yeah, this is definitely going to be a bit of a problem for his opponents. So that's going to be Siege Rams coming in pretty soon, I would be expecting. So far chemistry, I kept Rams, of course. And Melancholin, pretty strong echo. You can see a huge amount of gold, pretty decent amount of food and wood, so you should be expecting a big man good coming in pretty soon. And all the extra upgrades from Blacksmith as well. As we see the last remainders of the water army from Confer getting slaughtered, and this is basically yeah, going to be right now up to the up to the land battles because on the water we ends have given up on it and so far are not intent on coming back. Even though we cannot really discount that. Coming through the thin spot in here. And well, otherwise nothing happening at the top. Not much, just let this wall himself in. Expecting that he might be under pressure. But yeah, it's probably going to be <laughs> the other way around. Red attacking on the Viking. And I'm slightly worried for the Viking. Because he's not really walling himself up all that much. And since he's slinging banking right now for him being researched. Uh, yeah, already started in Confer actually, that's a difference. So he, he seems to think, or rather Vian seems to think, that Melancholin is basically boomed himself quite enough and doesn't need extra help, which means that the Hun is going to be slung into Paladins and oh well, <laughs> tough times coming, tough times coming for the CLBs quite soon <laughs> and that's going to be very very tough for them. Great cock, really? Is there just a misclick? And he wanted transport ship? I would almost say so, because he could be wanted to transport alone. Yeah, yeah, that was a misclick. Because you can see the transport ship right now from green in, or rather from blue in here. He has already transported a few cavalry <laughs> arches. That's pretty sneaky and clever play. And well, unfortunately for blue, yeah. Aidcock was a bit of a mistake in there, but he doesn't really mind all that much because he has already broken through. One for a slung is advancing into Imperial Age, and even though Disco in the pocket as the Viking, that's really a weird choice, is also advancing into Imperial Age, he is going to be completely useless on the land against the composition that is coming for him. So that's really a weird choice and <laughs> pretty aggressive castle buildup from Melancholin. Oh well. Oh well, he's taking this quite seriously indeed, and yeah, it's look like, looking like that Kushluk will be having to take this seriously quite soon indeed as well. Just now going for extra TCs for a bit of a boom, but since he cannot do absolutely anything against this castle, yeah, that's going to be a really, really tough job for him, as not even this Mangona is going to be enough, if at least a few Mangudais are going to be helping with defending that. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> That was fast through the, through the rams. And TC coming up, or rather down, with castle coming up. Yeah, pretty tough situation, as all the farms are going to be killed. Basically useless for Kushluk, but since he is still on the water, 
can use that, which he isn't, which is definitely a shame for him. But, yep, that's pretty much it. And let's see how long. And actually, CLB is going to be able to hold on with this, as we can see all the upgrades from Blue. Imperial Age, Shaft Mine in Boso, in the economy, and Boomin himself as well to join his ally in that. Looking at the economy, we have Melancholy 125, Dark Knight 119, one first 77, with this got 106, Kush look 77, Gamin 80, so economy quite a lot stronger, and you can already see this very nice raiding <laughs> from the flute. Few transported cavalry archers getting rid of the economy of the pocket disco, which is very important indeed at this stage. Trying to defend with the boats so that he doesn't need to delete them, or rather, have some kind of use from them before deletion and yet another castle being built <laughs> right in the middle of purple's base or rather let's say former base because it's not his anymore and with all the stables coming up from the hunts from the hunt player yep that is going to be pretty tough for his opponent to deal with but it almost seems like that the mongol will be able to deal with them just by himself he's doing definitely a pretty good job against the purple player and interesting disco is going for galleons onagers and arbalest Arbalest is basically the only unit that Vikings are useful with in the Imperial Age. Which is why I didn't understand why he, why he was the one going into Imperial Age and not slinging exactly as he ends, because they have won the water and there's not anything that they can gain, and going for the Galleons makes literally no sense at this stage. So, unfortunately, that's going to be a lot of wasted resources and just helping the ends in their pretty strong push into their opponents. So, we can see that purple has been basically deleted, <laughs> dropped to 47 villages. We'll try to raid at least something in here, but not much, as we can see also a defensive castle from the green. Not even walling himself in, just finally he is. <laughs> Going to be walling himself in and basically, really, giving extra time to his allies at the bottom to advance into their opponents and really slaughter them as much as they can. Another castle because of the gold. Trying to protect it and prevent their opponents from gathering from that very important research, or rather, a resource. Last furnace from Confer for better horses, cavaliers for gaming. Well, since he's Han, of course, he is going to be quite important in this next stage of the game. Pretty strong sling. Hit and half thousand, and he can still afford to go into Imperial Age. So it's almost looking like it. actually Dark Knight is kind of halfway thinking. Yeah, trying to make sure because he probably doesn't see there if it is right next to the wall or not. Yeah, he wasn't aware, but right now he is through the town watch, so he doesn't really need to worry about it. But to finish my thought, since he is going to into Imperial Age, he's either going to attempt to come back on the water or he is much more importantly going to be basically fully attacking on the land as well as his link is not going to be needed all that much for much longer as confer is already having pretty good echo at, le at least 87 for full production of paladins he needs 100 plus of course but since he has received all the resources for the upgrades he's not really going to be needing this link all that much of course <laughs> all these castles right now <laughs> <laughs> being dropped for me like Colin. Oh my. Not even those onages are going to be strong enough, I'm afraid for you. Oh well. <laughs> this is so well played by the line Colin. Oh nice boom. Going to be joined by the paladins. Just a matter of moments and yep. Yeah, really, really tough time for CLBs in here. That's a lot of castles to build Pangurais from. So even though the disco has quite nicely built in the middle in here, trying to basically set up some kind of beachhead into helping his ally, it's <laughs> going to be basically occupied by his opponent. Cavaliers coming in with paladins being researched. Just by himself? Yeah, just by himself, not really any kind of sling. And we are just basically waiting for the blue to make the appearance, which is going to be just about now fully upgraded. You can see plus 4 in attack and in armor. So yep. What, it, what just happened? Has he actually cancelled the upgrade? Because he was upgrading into Paladins, I'm fairly certain about that. So maybe he just somehow misclicked or... What's up with this? Or rather, I want him to confer, that is confusing. 
let's see if he joins again. Rather, clicks the upgrade up again. Maybe he wanted to invest more into horses just about now, so that's why he cancelled it. Really curious. Really curious and not really sure why this is happening, but it definitely is. And that will be a slight disadvantage for VNs, because of course they are going to be fighting against Paladins, which are not fully upgraded. They are not having really the attack, they are having just 14 plus 1. As the opponent is a bit better plus 1. 12 plus 4, that means 16, and his opponent just 15, so <laughs> the difference is basically just in the hit points, but just, that's 40 hit points, and that's a pretty big difference, so yeah, the ends have to be careful so that they don't underestimate, they don't underestimate this, but with a pretty huge slank right now by Dark Knight, it is going to be clicking into Paladins, and they are just now coming in, so they probably just disappeared from the overlay, and they were coming up anyway. So yep, with exactly the upgrade and the destruction of the army and basically being camped inside Hill's base, killing his economy and his game overall, the GG is here. And even though we ends lost the water, they bought all the time they needed with it to basically allow Melancholy in the pocket to boom. And that was, that was one storm through the bases of the purple and of course Ozutil as well. <laughs> Quite nicely played and controlled by VNs. They most definitely knew what they were doing. Nicely played, and you can see that they were attempting even to come back on the water from Dark Knight. Well, let's have a look at the achievements. Milan Colin is, of course, going to be win winning everything. He was the best by very, very far. But this score didn't do how bad. And on the water. Well, CLBs played quite well indeed, but the economies from VNs were <laughs> just too much, <laughs> literally too much for CLBs to handle. That's a very nice boom. Without any support from water economy, it has to be set, and without any kind of slang. GG then. So that has been...